Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's graph the results of the previous video. The current and the voltage as a function of time of this particular circuit. All right, let's first set up the table of values. We want to know the current and the voltage. And notice I have the current twice because I'm going to show you in two different ways of what the current will look like. And we'll do it for the times from 0 to pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. Seems like strange for pi, but you'll see in just a moment why. Notice that if t is equal to 0, and let's go for the current first, the cosine of 0 is 1, minus 10 plus 10 is 0, that means the current is equal to 0. When t is equal to pi, 0.5 times pi is pi over 2, that's 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 is 0, so this goes to 0, so we have a current of 10 amps, so this is in terms of amps. Then, when uh, t is equal to 2 pi, 0.5 times 2 pi is 180 degrees, or pi. The cosine of pi is minus 1. Minus 1 times negative 10 is plus 10. Plus 10 gives me 20. And then you can see that we go to 3 pi. Now again, we go down to 10. And 4 pi, we go back to 0. So that's how the current oscillates from 0 to 10 to 20 to 10 back to 0. And I'm repeating. How about the voltage? Well, when T is equal to 0, the sign of 0 is 0, so we have 0 volts. And then when t is equal to pi, 0.5 times pi, that's 90 degrees, or pi over 2, which is the sign of that is 1, so we have 100. And then when time is 2 pi, 0.5 times 2 pi is pi, then the sign of pi is back to 0, so we're back to 0. And over here, when we have 3 pi times 0.5, that's 3 pi over 2, which is a 270 degrees, that means negative 1 times 100 or negative 100, and then eventually we go back to 0. Now this seems strange because is there a shift, is there an offshift off, off here? Here you have 0 and 0, so something seems to be strange, but you see in just a moment that actually it isn't. We're going to show I in a different way. Notice that we have the steady state current, so we're going to leave that as always plus 10 for each one like this, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, and we'll just write down, down the oscillating portion of the current. So again, when t is equal to 0, cosine of 0 is 1, so we have a minus 10 here. Then, when uh, t is equal to pi, 0.5 pi, which is 90 degrees, that would be 0. And time is 2 pi times 0.5, which is pi, that means negative 1 times negative 10 is positive 10. And here again, when we go to 3 pi, that would be 270 degrees, cosine is again 0, that would be a 0. And finally, when, um, when we go back to 4 pi times 0.5, which is 2 pi, so the cosine of 2 pi is 1, and times negative 10 is negative 10. So you can see that this is the oscillating portion of the current, this is the steady state portion of the current, and now let's compare that to the voltage. So now when we compare the oscillating current to the oscillating voltage, notice what happens. The maximum current here is ahead in the time. The current happens first, then the voltage follows. So there's a delay factor between the current and the voltage. So let's see what that looks like when we graph it. Let's first graph the voltage. So when we graph the voltage, when time is equal to zero, volt is zero, right here. When time is equal to pi, the voltage is 100. So let's go like here, let's make this pi, let's make this 2 pi, let's make this 3 pi, and let's make this 4 pi. And at pi, we get to 100 volts, we're at zero, then we're at 100, at 2 pi, we're back to zero, then we're at minus 100, and then we're back to zero. So the curve will look something like this. Like that. Now let's draw the current, but the current, what we're going to do is we have the offset current of plus 10. So we're going to start off by drawing a line at plus 10 and drawing it like this. There's my plus 10 line. And then you can see that's what we call the, the current offset of 10 amps. So now on top of the, the DC current of 10 amps, what we're going to do now is draw the oscillating portion of that on top of that current. So we're 10 amps below that, which is right here. Then at pi, uh, let's say when pi, we're at zero relative to that. 
then we're at 10 plus, so now we're 10 above over here. And then over here, we're back to zero relative to the offset. And then we're back to zero right here. So then when we draw that curve, it looks like this. So we go like this up to the top and back down to the bottom like that. So now you see there is this offset. So we don't we reach maximum current at 2 pi and we reach maximum voltage at pi. So actually, I was actually wrong in the way I was stating it. The voltage rises first, then the current follows and there is a difference in the time of pi. So the difference in the time, the delta T is equal to pi. So the voltage rises to a maximum first and then the current rises to a maximum. And there's a difference in the time phasing of a pi seconds, I guess, in that respect. So there you can see the, the way it's laid out. If you take a look at the current in this respect, then of course you can simply follow the curve and that's what it looks like. Or we can simply talk about the oscillating part laid on top of the constant part right here, and then you can see that it oscillates around that line. So it gives you an interesting perspective of how the voltage and the current interplay in this circuit. It really is what we call an LC circuit, where the LC portion is the oscillating portion of the current that offset by the DC portion, which is the portion that's provided by the steady state current of the, of the source. And that is how we need to look at that circuit.